Hello, everyone. Welcome to Airway Circle Radio. This is episode three of Beauty and Breathing. I am your host today, Dr. Jennifer Hobson from the Hobson Institute, here to interview Dr. Martha Cortez from New York City. Dr. Martha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Just a little bit about Dr. Cortez's background, so you are understanding. Um, she is a general cosmetic, biological, neuromuscular, and laser dentist who subspecializes in the treatment of sleep breathing disorders and temporomandibular disorders. Uh, her methods include non-surgical techniques to treat the TMJ, TMD, as well as facial airway enhancement remodeling techniques designed to treat sleep apnea, which we'll be talking about today. As a multi-boarded practitioner and lecturer, Dr. Cortez does not just focus on the teeth, she considers your teeth and your body incorporating a biological edge in her approach, techniques, and practice. It is with this background in combination with her knowledge, experience, in neuromuscular dentistry, laser dentistry, posturology, and chirodontics that she practices the way she does. That's why we get so <laughs> along together because I'm a physical therapist and she understands a lot about how the body works and how the bite and the occlusion work together. Constantly studying new techniques, this woman is a dynamo. She is always learning. I think that's also why we, we get along. We along. just <laughs> want to keep learning more. And there's so much more to keep learning about of this airway, or this airway uh, profession. So Martha truly rises to the challenge, standards, and approaches to treat her patient's health. Beginning with your mouth, she brings truth and light into her trademark, your smile, your health. So Thank Martha, you. <laughs> Oh, it's so great to have you here. And, and I'm, I'm so excited to really get everybody that's listening, that's watching this, that can really understand the, the, the uniqueness that you bring and the energy that you bring to this field. Um, Martha, we've known each other for a while now, uh, I think since 2014, when I entered the, this airway um, world. And I was so impressed by you because you seem to be someone that is eager to keep learning and no one's going to stop you. You can't, there's nothing you can't do, Martha. Honestly, I've always felt like you, there's nothing that, that can ever say she can't do that. No, she's going to prove that she can do anything that any other dentist can do. And I'm so, I'm so glad that um, we've met and that we've been collaborating ever since. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much. But you know, what's really true because I've had people ask me, how did you get to that? I said, all I need is one to three patients that I cannot answer a, a question. Then I'm always asking that question, why can't that be done? And how can I get that done? And the how is what makes me educate and, and pursue. It's like I have this driving force to pursue and answer that question. And I, I'm not fearful. No, um, you are not fearful. That is true. You have no fear. Well, and I and have determination. Limits. There are limits, but I have a lot of determination. So you have some questions for me. Go ahead. Yes, I do. <laughs> so you were one of the first 100 accredited cosmetic dentists in the U.S. through the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. First 40 diplomats through the American Board of Aesthetic Dentistry. How did you end up with a therapy appliance? I know, right? How did you? But, uh, you know, I had a 20-something-year-old 20, 20 excruciating pain. She was on three medications for depression. And the most recent one, she was already on neuroptin three months, which means she was going to become a skinny bendy because they don't have very good appetite. She was going to destroy her teeth because she's going to get dr worse dry mouth in the three meds. And I put it on, I put her on since I had already three diplomates in TMD, had done some sleep already. I put her on a orthotic in one month, the pain was gone. Spoke to the physician, assisting, how are we going to get her off the meds? Because her pain is gone. There's no impetus. But do we need to speak about her being in college, not knowing what, where to go to grad school, 
having a sweetheart who's not asking the question, should they be taken more seriously? Why? The pain. Who he really want to marry someone who's in pain all the time and complaining all the time? And she couldn't stay up with her college work to apply for grad school. So got her off her pain and she asked, how can we make this more permanent? So I did a form of reconstruction. Brilliant, everything's wonderful, got engaged, got into grad school, but I still ask the question, for a 20 year old, could I do that a little more conservative? There has to be something. The same way I had asked the question many, many, many years ago, why cut and sew periodontal disease and cause black spaces between the teeth? The pocket was 12 or 16 millimeters. There had to be something that was more conservative and stimulating for the regeneration. So I found the laser. So with asking the, and, and that is what gave conservative regeneration. This is 20 something years ago, 29. Today, that is one of the most important tools in periodontal surgery, no cut so regeneration. And when I asked the question of the, young, of, of, of the young woman, how can I do it? In walks the DNA with Dr. Singh. Conservative, 2009, 2010. And immediately the first three cases, go in. It was a 16 year old who the canine was ectopic and it couldn't come down. She was so fearful because her whole family had gotten full braces for two to five years and had chains and surgery to force that canine down. So I was already with Dr. With Dr. Singh. I had thought of it. All you had to do is create the space and then gene. The epigene will allow, once the space is there, is for the tooth to remember that it needs to come down and forward. Remember, regeneration, the gene, right. but you have to have the space. Right. So let me back up one second because I want I want everybody to understand this is this is um, a podcast to the public too. So sometimes I think when we talk, we want <laughs> really un they understand it. So this earlier case that you were talking about, you helped her with an appliance. That appliance changed her bite and it took away her pain, however you did it, right? If it was vertical, right. if it yeah. brought her jaw, for whatever it was. And then you restored, restoring means making the teeth come to that level with- Exactly, so her head, her jaw was forward because she was in pain, her breathing was destroyed, her sleeping was horrible. So with the reconstruction, bringing the jaw down and forward and then yeah. opening up the vertical and then opening a little bit of the width, so a little width, a little vertical, um, but the upper and lower jaw, which opened up the airway. So she, all of that opened up the airway, but what- And opened it, up the cervical. That's and, the key. and it created the right cervical lordosis. And that's one thing that, you know, we always talk uh, together with. It's it's the, the upper cervical spine and the cervical lordosis with that correct bite that keep a stable head and neck you know, condition, but you, you got her out of pain. You wanted something more conservative. Dr. Singh brought in this whole education around DNA. Therapy. So now this appliance therapy is explain it. Now it's, a, it's an expansion. It's so many people say that adult can't be expanded. Well, what's interesting is I started again, researching, diving in the forties and fifties had it. There are functional appliances that with, with, and then vertical is changed on the human, which which then also changes the neck because you're bringing the jaw, the jaws jam forward, so you're allowing the jaw. No wait, the jaws jam back, and the right. head is forward. So then, what happens? You're losing the lower jaw to come forward. It opens up the space again. Singh talked about it too. The vestibular space, opening up the space for the the jaw stimulate the sutures to widen. Let the lower jaw come down and forward, which now opens up the vertical. Let the teeth, they super erupt into their physiology because when there isn't enough breath, the right swallow, not the right swallow, not the right breathing to the nose, there's a survival mechanism that goes forward and into most of the fear posture. So you're relaxing those shoulders bringing the jaw forward, which allows now to open up the vertical because you're opening with vertical and then the head can actually position itself better on the neck. And then even the with the help, you usually have a team get that C1 in the right position. All that opens up the airway, 
and the swallowing, and then the knee. But nowadays, the emphasis on rebreathing, knowing breath, 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 nose, nose, nose. You have to have space. So with these these original appliances that Dr. Singh came in with, they're different designs. It's not just one. You open your the width of the upper jaw, what happens opens up the nose. So sinusitis reverses. Uh, if there's even congestion, you can see mucous seals all reverse, post-nasal drops, the, the post-nasal drip, actually that was there for like 10 years. It takes a little longer, then it pours out and all of a sudden it doesn't. Right. So, is so there, you know, so as you were saying, the full mouth reconstruction made me realize I want width, I want vertical, then I want to bring that jaw down and forward and open up the posture. So a lot of these patients have grown two centimeters. Right. So the, the, what's interesting about what you're saying about the neck. Now the base of the skull is where a lot of the cranial nerves come out and the cranial nervous system is that automatic nervous system that we see, we hear, we swallow, we breathe. Well, when you're compressed like that woman was, that head goes forward, the jaw goes back, the airways constricted, you're actually compressing that whole system. So that's why people end up having issues with these automatic functions. People like don't realize that they're not breathing right. They don't realize that they're, they're tongue thrusting or grimace swallowing every single time, which, you know, we swallow up to 2000 times a, a day, a day. So doing that improperly causes this tension. So Martha, you are, you are a skilled practitioner on this expansion device. And I know that you you don't stop there. Is there other types of devices that you're using also to, to do this? You're, you're someone that doesn't well, think that one device works on everybody, right? Well, again, you have to see who is the patient and what is it? So this whole realm, I was teaching already within three months with Dr. Singh. I was the first one to actually teach the, and certify for the DNA certification, but it wasn't DNA. It was reversing sleep apnea. My first 33 cases were reversing TMD, but I had the three diplomates already. So I, I knew which case selection. Also, it's also case selection and the remodeling and expansion. But there were some that no matter how much I was creating it, they wouldn't regenerate. I was like, they, we're giving them the space. We're giving them the breathing. It was the nose. So there are cases where we'll use the DNA in a face mask and then expand the laurel. So where it will open up, they need to learn how to breathe. They need to use their tongue. If they're tongue tied, they are methyl tetrahydro uh, folate reductase enzyme deficient, which was all the way in their sixth week of neonatal. So we're going back all the way there. So these people, you also have to learn nutrition. You need to do the methyl methylate with the B12 and the energizes them. But there's still some people that it just doesn't work. So then there were other braces that were a little more forceful that I do. Um, and then some, the question is, how much do you need to open? Because five millimeters, six millimeters, we can do the DNA. But there's some cases we couldn't do. Their nose was just so stuck. So then we had the ENT. Then we worked with several ENTs. Opening in about three months, six months, one year was great. Then all some of them shrunk. So there are some cases that you have to actually put implants in and skeletally open. Because that, that is, is, see? is that the maxillary skeletal, maxillary skeletal expander. And I base it on a rhino manometry measurement because there are some that just don't. And it's so interesting because there's these little, these little lines, all about measurements, just like the K7 when I did neuromuscular, if you can't measure it, it's just an opinion. Well, we're measuring it. And it even shows you when the posture is involved because you should know if you don't nasal correctly, your posture goes off. Are you kidding me? It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's the whole, you know, that's, that's where we come into play a lot because you send me patients that need this nasal breathing training and the majority of them are all narrowed, right? These, I, and I can tell you, I'm a, I'm a breathing patient too. So I've gone through all of this training myself as a patient, but when you cannot breathe through your nose, your mouth parts, 
you open your mouth just a little bit and it starts to use the improper muscles of the neck and the chest. Your scalenes get tight. These muscles right along the sides start to elevate your rib cage. So you're inflated and you're high and you're breathing up here. You're not getting to all of the areas of your lungs and your rib cage is staying in an elevated position. So when you send patients for breathing retraining, I am educating them a on how to unplug their nose, how to open up what they have. Of course, many what they have, have <laughs> what they have. Hopefully, you know they either get nasal surgery as well, or this. It sounds like the MSE also opens up the nose. Is that right? It does. More than thirty percent. It's really interesting because we have the DNA that's done it. And we accomplished it, but there were some patients that didn't. So I needed to look why, what the difference is, what measurable. And those patients that the, it's horrible breathing, horrible posture. And it's not a scoliosis, it's a nasal cycling problem that causes the posturing issue. Those we can open up, but then we have to sustain it also. So it's, all of these things are not as easy as perceived, but they're doable. But the question is always asking, who's the patient? What do they need? Why do they need it? How can we get there? Okay. And the MSC, I would like to know how much, how much opening in the back of the nose does it actually do? That's, the, that's exactly the, the secret. The, because the, well, you don't put the MSC plus the soft palate. It's always on the hard palate. Yeah. And then actually, I thought it opened up more in the front but we're getting perception, perception, because we're still measuring these things, that it, the posterior pharyngeal space open. So we're getting the posterior to open, which originally only the ENT were the ones to be able to open that. But again, the question is, once we get them, once we hold them, how much are they going to sustain? Because I want to see also what one to two years look like. And mm -hmm. the, the MSC practitioners, there's very few in the United States. Uh, and of How course, old is this technique, Martha. Uh, no, Dr. Moon came out with the MSC in 0307, wait, the okay. 07 ish. And it's been around, it's just the number of people trained. So, of yeah. course, I found the one that's done either 3,000 or 8,000. I couldn't get the right. All I know is that he does, he has about 10 doctors that work with him. So, what happens, he does uh, 40 to 80 patients a day. Cause he had, he's a, and he, um, wow. he, so I think he does 800 a year and then three, three, it's really quite a bit because that's 10 patients, 40, 80, uh, that he sees, but it's about 10 that he actually does. And then I think it is closer, someplace between three to 8,000. So I'm working under him to learn. So, uh, okay. we, as a group, bring him in. It's extraordinary, but what he has done is shocking. So so, has, yeah, I have a few cases right now in my practice as a PT that I'm doing, you know, myofunctional therapy and breathing retraining. And I'm shocked at how wide the gap is between the front teeth. <laughs> and it is so, four, I mean, four to eight millimeters, depending on the case. Right. So if, if, if it say fills it, in. then it, it fills, fills in. in. So, it, so after you open it, and you're opening wide and kind of forward too, right? It automatically goes forward, the, the forward. It just does it automatically. It goes wow. the width and then the AP area of this, the nasal, uh, uh, nasal maxillary goes forward automatically three to five millimeters. But you know what? A lot of things do. Like the, the daemon, passive ligation, they always go three millimeters, a lot of them. Pass, uh, but it goes three, five plus width. Then the lower jaw uh, comes down and forward because now you're increasing the vertical. Um, it's extraordinary. And but then you know what? I did this. I started looking for it was because of the sleep apnea patients that some of them you expand, you put them in the right position. They still haven't cleared. We've sent them for all the soft tissue. It still hasn't cleared that much because there's always that percent. I always go, it's 80%, but then there's that 20 so that 20, some of them were fearful they may just die because they can. And, and, you know, they were 90 AHI, very high, severe apnea. But, you know, night apnea also has day apnea. 
Just because you're clearing it at night, there's still an issue. So some of those people were looking to express them. But again, age dependent because he's bone dependent and sex dependent. So the 13, the 10, 11, 12 are easy. 14, 16, they're very easy. But in, in, in you mean the ages? Age, age. And the, they're, um, and you don't have to be doing anything except just put them the implants in, open them up, and then uh, realign the teeth. The vertical will increase. The airway is it, amazing. All of a sudden, they learn that they can breathe through their nose because that was the main criteria is they weren't breathing through their nose. Should we be doing ENT? So anyway, um, and they had tonsils and adenoids, some of them done, not all of them. But then we go into the 20. So now you have to start doing the cortical puncture into the transverse. 30, 40, you have to start doing the cortical puncture. Once you get into the male, 40 to 50, the 55-year-olds, they're extremely difficult. Now, the one that I'm studying under, he does them all the time. He worked on a 79-year-old. Wow. So it's but then you have to go cortical in the transverse, yeah. and you have to go up into the spine here, too. So that is that SFOT type thing, surgically facilitated or? Um, it's, well, the surgically facilitated is, is all up here. That's a different, different. it's totally, totally different. This is just using on the transverse and then here in the middle because you're trying to enhance the, the, the break. Essentially is the break. Who does that, Martha? Who does that? You that do that or is another? Well, you have to have surgical training. So some are teams. And some are not teams. Um, and that's, but are you doing your own right now? I uh, I do surgical implants already. So I've been doing implants. I I'm involved with internal sinus lifts, external sinus lifts. I reconstruct, and I don't reconstruct the whole jaws. So I am comfortable. I have the equipment. I have the equipment to do all this work with. I have the cortical punctures. I have the piezo. So I have the equipment. I've used the equipment so that. It was a very natural um, process to continue. Since Amazing. So if you're- You have older, to be comfortable in all these things. But course. older is the, the key. They're harder. And what was great studying with this practitioner is that sometimes you have to go and do it twice on the older gentleman because their testosterone is the testosterone that's the big deal. And, and you may still have to get their nose enhanced because now- now you run into a territory of um, experience. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. I, I mean, I, I think, how did you become an airway dentist? What made you do all of this? Like, what made you go into it? Is it just it your curiosity? Back to that, those 20 year olds where it's very nice to do pretty little veneers. It really is very nice. But to start, and I started noticing that the cans were off. So in the cosmetic world, I said, well, why is the jaw so asymmetrical? And the models, my practice, this is the 90s when we started this whole thing and we used to teach it. The models would tilt to do their, their smiles with their new veneers. I'm going, why are they tilting? So I would straighten them out and, and look and go, oh my God, they're canted. So the question is, why can't it? So I went into the whole study of TMD. So realize that you have to make the upper jaw, actually not start with the lower, start with the upper and actually make it parallel to the floor. Get the, the, inter, the, turn, the internal and external rotations, the temporal plate correct. So again, either you do it with porcelain or you do it with an appliance. See, that's it. What do you do it with? Um, and sometimes what makes us unique is that like right now we're doing osseous remodeling, reversing sleep apnea with the appliance, then we are enhancing them with zirconium implants as we bring the jaw down and forward. So we just got a lot of things out of the way. And you have to know when to take teeth out in and put teeth in. And then you have to know, like, I have a young boy. He's not young. He's 14, 15. His four teeth, because it was so constricted, the roots were barely developed. Mm. There was no way I could put braces on him. There was no way I could even put an, a, a D, the DNA may not enhance him enough. So I ended up doing MSC and not touch those front teeth and just total epigen, create the space, the roots will get longer. Um, used a little bit of a passive ligation to keep those little four teeth in place. The case is magnificent. 
That's fascinating. So you have to know when to do what, and it's not simple. Um, Another one we started where she had so much infection in her jaw. She had apical surgeries that the mercury silver had lifted out, multiple cysts, lobulated cysts with multiple five root canals and two more. And she's only 30 something. So that infection had to go. So we had, I had to start with the infection first, remove all the infection, take the teeth out and simultaneously put zirconium implants because you had to hold the space. Otherwise, you're going to be doing the whole thing of a taking teeth out, putting the bone graft, waiting, 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 put the, put the implants, put some, and then there was the, the spacing, the little theater pink around the teeth would disappear, would go flat. So we did, I did it all one by one, but at the same time to maintain the tissue, maintain the bone and the bone regenerate. I know she wasn't really developed, but she really didn't have any. She was tall, beautiful, is. So what I did is I enhanced the lower jaw with a little bit of a passive ligation, a braces. Her lower jaw came down and forward. She looks longer, taller, and she breathes better. So it's a way of, and I'm showing this at the um, SDS study group, in-person study group in, um, uh, in the end of June, June 24th, 25th through SDS, Sleep Dental Solution, I'm giving this lecture presentation on combining osseous remodeling with surgical enhancement, but it's, but it's um, mostly surgery for infection and expansion. But the jaws are changing. You see the face changing. Because that's my whole thing. I want to see what enhancement it be. and health. How do you improve the health of these people? Airway first. Nasal first, infection out. It's amazing how much how much more beautiful they become. Like breathing and beauty, right? Go hand in hand. Um, if they can't breathe, they, their their faces change, right? Their neck, their posture, oh, all they, that. Changes. They become like a shuffle face. It looks like a shovel, flattened shovel. And you know what's interesting? Before I became my dentist, I saw this first because I worked with. McCarthy and Converse at NYU Medical Plastic Surgery, we used to turn the bones around. We used to cut and, and, and paste a new face. And what I noticed was the smile, the change in personality, because they could breathe. So it, it's in my bones, that memory that I remember. So I knew in the future of dentistry, I was finishing biochemistry at that point. Somebody said, you'd be a great dentist. So I went and volunteered with Barry Grayson at NYU Medical Plastic Surgery. But what I learned there, you can't learn in a book. So it's been in me and I've been working on it. How can I create the same effect without cut and sew? In periodontal surgery, in the jaw. And now how can you enhance the breathing, the health, and the side effect, the face? Right. You can, it's possible, but there's always your limits. You have to have patient case selection. Now, you mentioned expansion. Like I'm always trying as a myofunctional therapist and a physical therapist of the TMJ, I'm always trying to understand, you know, when you're constricted, you know, and so many of us are, because we, we didn't know we were breathing that long while we were growing into adulthood our mouths shrunk so much that our tongues don't fit resting <laughs> up. So well, the point what, is to yeah, try to what create came first that. Though? Right? What came first though? Was it the tongue and breathing? Was it the breathing? Was it their actual rhythm when they were in neonate? Because I still go, we're, we're writing that book. Right? When we're I, almost I, there. Thrilling, thrilling. <laughs> um, what came first is that six week when that, the jaws separated when the, the, the palate came together, when the tongue was supposed to separate and separate. And if that phenom, like the webbing of fingers, we have a tongue tie is a web, a hand that doesn't have fingers because it didn't separate. It has that webbing. That didn't allow the upper jaw to develop, didn't allow the jaw to come forward, didn't allow the latching, changed the rhythm of breathing. And supposedly we have a natural rhythm, a cranial rhythm. It, it's not there. So that's why these kind of humans, we are working 
and working. And you know what? Those kind of humans will always be an art in progress. And that's a way to look at them. They are an art in progress and we're working on the inside of the sculpture for the outside sculpture to be enhanced, to be the best that it can be. And that's why we used to, used to call epigene orthodontics, we used to call it epi because you're upregulating the breath. So let me let, um, let, me, let, me <laughs> let me try to summarize for the public. I, I think I understand. Um, so what you do as an airway dentist, airway centric dentist, you're creating an airway that's really compromised by using appliance therapy and some surgical techniques to allow even adults to expand. We know that children can expand easy because they're still growing, but adults can actually expand their palates and also bring their jaw forward with appliance therapy to create that proper airway so that Lift. the head and neck and the, and the mouth fit ap appropriately in the right curvatures. All of that reduces tension, allows nasal breathing, and it's possible even as an adult without, you know, orthognathic or jaw reconstruction. You know, that's, that's, that's the extreme when someone's so compromised. You know, it's not the extreme. Some people choose it because what happens, it's a little, it's a little easier and a little faster, but the question still, and but it's a little more caustic in many different ways, but they still need to learn how to breathe, right? They still need to know how to place their tongue correctly. They have to do the exercise before the tongue tie releases. Some of them need it three times. They had it as a child. It, it, it wasn't loose the way it's supposed to. It held their fascia. So they've always been inclined a little because the tongue tie held them back. Their breath held them back. Their incorrect placement of the tongue and their correct eating. They slap around the food. Like it, it, it's fun. It's interesting, not funny. So it's not simple, but it is. But I have to say those things because not every person is eligible to get all these things. Some of them, sometimes it is because they have to be willing to put the work in. If they're not willing to put the work in. It doesn't work if it's just dentistry, right? If it's just, right. no. it, you know, you, you don't train the nose, you don't train the tongue posture. It, it's like you created the structure, but the function isn't there because the pattern yeah. of neurological breathing and swallowing are set and they need to be relearned. And that's the brain. They're remapping their brain. They're, even their cranial nerves are resetting the cranial nerves. They're resetting the vagus, seven and five, because breathing through the, through the accessory muscles, as you were showing the scalings, it's the facial nerve. So therefore, they never transferred over, because facial nerve breathing is more like an infantile swallow and infantile breathing. They never right. transferred over to seven, trigeminal. So that's why those froggy, have you seen the froggy mouth lips? Those work because it transfers you from the seventh to the, from the eight, from the facial ner nerve, cranial nerve into the trigeminal, which is grown up breathing, swallowing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and just so everybody understands who's listening, tongue tie is something that people don't really know much about in, 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 in the general public, but um, in the airway field, I'm also someone that was tongue tied and have many patients that are tongue tied. And tongue tied just means that that little frenulum, that cord underneath the tongue, is tight, creating a lower tongue posture. Lower tongue postures create a narrow jaw, and a narrow jaw allows the tongue to only kind of stay low. So you just are perpetually, you're, you're always going to have an issue with a low tongue and an airway compromise. The airway should be supported by the back of the tongue. And when the tongue is tied, it's still, it's too low. The tongue is what spreads the palate wide. Every swallow, if it's done properly, every time it rests, as our mouth grows, it should grow naturally that your tongue, your teeth, your lips should be the perfect braces, right, Martha? It should Absolutely. work that way. And how do they know? They tongue thrust. There's a little space in the front because the tongue peaks. Or they're grinding. They're clenching. 
it's now not only just the tongue, not only now the swallow, but now their brain is not getting enough oxygen. How does that show? A little anxiety, prefrontal cortex issues, a little anxiety if it stays too long, depression. If they're going into the survival mechanism of going forward, that see compression, again, anxiety, depression, headaches, migraines, all because of the compression. So I love C1, C2. I did my master's thesis for the International College of Cranial Mandibular Orthopedics. Why? Because I knew you cannot get the bite if the, the first bite going like this. No, you have to, I take them out of the seat, stand them up and put everything where it should because you have to have the O, C1, C2, the occiput, the skull, the first little atlet, the first little vertebra and the second in the right spacing. And when I teach, I'm a clinical advisor for Vivos, and I get to see so many cases, it's so exciting, because my clinical doctors that I assist in just understanding the case, knowing where to go and where there may be issues or what do we need to address, the compressions on C1, C2 is shocking. One millimeter where the vertebra, the little process is now pushing into the skull and denting it. There's a dent. Because of the vertebra. Yep. Are you kidding me? We call that static atlas. You know, I, I teach Ro I Mariano Roccobato's work and the atlas, the first C1, you know, because of that compression gets stuck up there. And as you move your head, you yes, should have a movement of that those upper cervical spine joints. And when it's stuck like that, the nerves that lead right there aren't oh. getting proper circulation, oh. aren't getting, getting proper adhesions. And adhesions and the feedback system of those little, little, little the Golgi apparatuses and the Puccini's right there is like 200 in between there, like C1, yeah. C2 onto the octopus. They get improper feedback, improper brainstem feedback. And the thing is, it's perceived as pain and ache. So now are they going to be put on low dose amitriptyline, low dose antidepressants? And does the pain now lead us to more depressants, antidepressants? Do we get stuck? Do we not breathe? You know, it could lead you know, down so many roads that you have to have a team to assist. That's we what I love about it, Martha. You, you've, you've taught me so much. I mean, we've been working together. You understand what physical therapists can do, the upper cervical spine leveling, the jaw relaxation. You understand what myofunctional therapy can do to help support the airway, the tongue function, and the breathing. And you have the eyes. You bring in eye therapy when the patient needs it and cranial sacral therapy. You're just always looking out to create the perfect team for these patients the because team. it takes that. You got to do the team. The team is, and it's different for every person, not the same team. And then you cannot overwhelm them by putting too many. So you have to bring it in, right. a, in the, the right timing. You have to decompress first. So Martha, you are one of the, I would say very few that are doing all this work. Um, the types of patients that this would help are sleep apnea patients, TMD patients. So what, pain, cervical pain. Cervical pain. They're, and you see them, they're going, wait, they go like this. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're, not, they're not comfortable they're in their own yeah, bodies, they're like right? This. They're going like this. And, and then they stand, up, they stand up and they're going, oh. I go, what are you doing? <laughs> So just so so the public can know there is help. Head and neck pain, you have to also understand that the dentist could be a very critical part of the team. And what Dr. Cortez does is a non-surgical approach to opening up the airway that creates the proper posture, the proper position of the tongue and the space for the tongue and the airway support so that all the symptoms start to reduce and sleep apnea reduces, snoring reduces. These, these are techniques that if you can find someone, how do they find someone like you, Martha? How, what do they do to find someone like you? I know you're in New York. You're right at- um... well, One of the things you and I are doing is in the book, we're gonna put a website connected to the, uh, the, the different people that can they do. So okay. one would be the website and that would, um, the power of the tongue in the beginning, we were all tongue tied.com. So okay. that is a website that we're gonna, ha we have references. Airway Circle 
also has references. And then we have people like the Vivos Life, uh, Therapeutic Vivos Life. Then we have um, the Brief Institute, Dr. Sagi. Then we have, there are so many different possibilities. But again, then we have Dr. Bronson with the ALF. Yes. The light wire, because the children, sometimes we can do that, or we can do a Vivo's Guides, or there's also companies like Healthy Start. There are different possibilities. I was, uh, one of my, pay, uh, somebody was re uh, reminding me of the AAPMD, the American. Well, we're speaking at that in, in September. Mm -hmm. um, Martha, you're part of the collaborative airway team that, I created a team of, of practitioners that works together, just like you're mentioning, so that the, 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 the public can understand and the other airway practitioners can learn how we work together um, and, and what, what we provide, what part of the team, um, what, what services are we providing. Um, so I, that's going to happen in September. And this field is it's growing. It's growing. It's growing and it's going to keep growing. And because the awareness, yes. because in 2009 and 2010, when I did this, I looked like a witch again, talking about airway, talking about reversing sleep apnea, reversing TMD, because I knew it was possible first with porcelain, but you don't have to do a form of reconstruction. You have to ask the question, why were you grinding? Why were you snoring? What is that problem? What's that lower back pain? Why does the lower back pain also have a compression of, um, right on C4, right? The, uh, the, it, it compresses the, the entire spine. The, the, yeah. the airway will compress the neck, but that goes all the way down. And then the oh, ankle. And then if you're an athlete, what knee is going to go because of that compression? Or if you get a little older, what hip replacement are you going to need because you did not have it addressed early enough? So I don't freak out everybody all the time, but I freak them out a little bit sometimes because I, well, if you don't address that, um, you have that pin and needle right there on your left side and that right knee is achy. But tell me about the arch on the left, your left arch. They're like, what are you talking about? I said, you already have those things. So why don't you address it by just lifting your skeleton? You lift, I said, just think about it. You lift your skeleton, you just took the pressure off that left hip. That right, right knee just got better because now you're creating the space that's being compressed that's pushing everything out. What's, what's, what's a, what do they call lux when they, the disc? Lux. Yeah, they sublux or sub all of them. Yeah, All of them. They all sublux. Why there's too much pressure and incorrect forces. So you got to lift them. And the best lift is the mouth because it is the terminal point of the spine. Yeah. That is what the teeth is. And it's not the bite. It is the jaws. It right. is the soft tissue. It is the airway, it airway. is the cervical, and now reflect into the lumbar, and now into the ankles. <laughs> so that was pastor, That's and that I learned about breakout in posturology in the year 2000. And it's amazing how much is really connected and the information is there, but we have to be, become a little more aware, but you gotta start soft breath. Through the nose. Swallowing. You must breathe through the nose. Gentle swallow, gentle swallow, no strain, no grimace. And no having to crack. No tilting neck. of the head on one side. So many patients are tilted and, and forward. So Martha, thank you so much. This has been so enlightening. And I hope everybody here has learned a few things um, of what, what dentistry can do to help all of these symptoms reverse and go away. Dr. Martha Cortez, thank you so much for this wonderful I have one more interview. comment. Oh, please, please. Because I was my own patient. My face was longer. So I had a long face syndrome. So all the photos of my son when he was three and four and four yeah. years old, I had a long face and it was narrower. So with my therapy and I had cluster headaches, headaches called hemiplasia, self balgia because they were circadian. Then it turns out I had sleep apnea. I did not have adrenal fatigue. I did not have thyroid, uh, hypothyroid and all this other stuff. Of course, I was a dentist and I'm, I was exposed to heavy metal, which makes the thyroid. But the second I took care of my sleep, expanded my jaws, reversed myself in six, nine months to a three from a 24. Age I 24 means I should have been big, fat football player, you know, congested. 
But my family are sleep apnea. Did they ever tell us? No, because it's a secret. All families keep secrets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so all that I reversed, my face looks more Colombian. I have a Colombian face. Oh, that's uh, right. Look, see, looks like I yeah. look like a real Colombian now. Right before it was so long and, yeah. and narrower, not a subtle, but it was. That is epigenetic. That is raising the gene to a better one. Yeah. Um, my belly that was forming went you know, away. The belly is the fight and, and, and the fight for, for breath in yeah. your sleep. The headaches was the oxygen going down because the oxygen desaturation. It was an issue. Maybe I was getting me anxious without knowing that I was. All those things are feasible to reverse. Thank you. You're welcome. And I know that you can do it because we've been working together and I've seen so many people transform because of you. If anybody's uh, in New York. Us. us, the team. us. I the love team. the team. That's right. Team. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Cortez. You. And everyone, we will be uh, meeting next, next month with an interview of Dr. Karen Davidson. That's our next podcast. I want to tell you, thank you so much for being here and we'll continue to bring you as much information and education around airway treatments and how you can help yourself and others improve your health. Thank you so much. Bye everybody. Thank you so much.